<laughs> I just hope the women's charity league luncheon feels the same way. <laughs> You've got to let me model this one. Yeah, oh, sure, huh? Did you mm. find anything you like? Oh, I love the gowns. They're so clean. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, and the swimsuits and the maxi coats and everything. Isn't this wild? Oh, I've never seen such fantastic colors. Hello. Uh, yes, you too. Uh, Barbara. Now, I think we ought to show the evening wear last. Would you hold the line, please? Isn't this a cute dress for Dodie to wear? Uh, oh, telephone, Barbara. Well, oh, you wouldn't get me one of those. <laughs> uh, honey, uh, you're wanted on the phone. Oh, oh, okay. Honey, you just pick out anything you want in the casual line, okay? Now, uh, look, I, I'm expecting a very important phone call. Oh, yeah. So, I won't uh, be long. I won't be long. Dear. Rachel, I'm so glad you called. What about the place cards? Look at this printed foil. Wouldn't that be pretty in pink? Oh, yes. I think you're just really super this year, don't you? Super. Well, don't worry about it. Just do the best you can. What about the floral arrangement? Oh, well, that's ridiculous. But this is Saturday. You mean to tell me that they don't know if they're going to have carnations by Monday? That's only two days away. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Oh, hi, Dad. Uh, hi, uh, Kitty. Hello, Dad. Molly. <laughs> yeah, very pretty. I'm just uh, passing through. <laughs> You know, this is the first time I've ever gone fishing below sea level without even getting wet. Oh, well, hi. hi. You fellas all set to go? I am. Check with Alice, the milk drinker here. Oh. <laughs> Dad, did you know that the Salton Sea is 231 feet below sea level and saltier than the Pacific Ocean? No, I read about that. And nearby there, they've got hot spring wells and mud pots and CO2 wells that can actually make dry ice. Mm. Come on, what are you? You got your dad all choked up. Come on, move it, what is it? I uh, better give you fellas a hand, huh? Oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll handle it. Hey, Steve, I don't envy you spending a three-day weekend here with that chattish convention going on <laughs> and with Chip's class on the field trip somewhere. Huh, you're going to be up to your ears in women. No, I don't think it'll be too bad, Charlie. I've got those reports to work on. That'll keep me busy. Yep. Probably for me. Steve Douglas. Oh, uh, hold the line, please. It's for Barbara. <laughs> Barbara! So long, Gab. So long, Aaron. Well, see you Monday night. And lots of luck. <laughs> Catch a lot of fish, Charlie. Honey, did you call me? Yeah, telephone. Oh. For you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get some really groovy jewelry to go with that sequin outfit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, Gladys. <laughs> if I sound weary, it's because I am weary. Yeah, how about those jeweled belted lounging pajamas? <laughs> Hi, Dodie. Hi, Daddy. I haven't got time to play with you today. Oh, you haven't? Uh, why not? I'm going to be a fashion model for Mommy. Are oh, you too? Yep. I'm going to wear children's clothes with Roddy Trenchell. He's the best looking boy in school. He's neat. <laughs> I see. Maybe we can do something next weekend. Yeah, uh, maybe we can. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Barbara. Uh, no, I thought maybe it was that call I was expecting. Uh, no, no, you go right ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted. Yeah. <laughs> Tramp, I uh, guess this just isn't my day. <laughs> I'll do my best, but it won't be easy. I'll find someone somehow. Thanks for calling. Oh, sounds like the department store wants some of their men's fashions in the show. And you have to find a man to wear them. Where am I going to find a man to, to walk down a runway in front of 200 women? I could ask Ronnie Trenchell if he has a friend. <laughs> I'd volunteer Chip, but he's out of town. He has to be good looking. He has to wear clothes well. well I told you he's out of town. Very <laughs> masculine. Why don't I ask Rob? Robbie? Sure. Oh, Chip wouldn't do it for a million dollars. <gasps> neither would Steve, I'm afraid. Well, neither would Rob, unless uh, someone very close to him asked him in just the right way. <sighs> Katie, you gotta be falling out of the back of your skull. <laughs> we need someone handsome and, and virile, and, and you wear your clothes so well. Thanks, but no thanks. Barbara needs you. Uh, you know, this is a big responsibility for her. What would I have to do, exactly? Well, I don't know exactly. It's a photographic layout. No. Oh, you don't mind being photographed, do you? Is that all it is? 
Oh, hey, the milk's boiling over. He's really going out on that runway? You didn't tell him about the runway. <laughs> well, you may be right. At this point, it's better not to mention it. Okay, Katie. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, hey, Katie. Uh, thanks. For saving my life. <laughs> Bye. Hello. Oh, you want Steve? Uh, wait just a minute. Steve! Steve? Honey, have you seen Daddy? I think you've been out. Oh. Uh, well, he isn't here right now. Could I take a message? Uh-huh. All right. I certainly will. I'll tell him as soon as he comes in. Thank you. Honey? Why don't you go upstairs and help Aunt Polly with her things? She's going to stay with us while Chip's away. Hey, me! Oh, honey. Uh, that phone call. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? I uh, went down to the drugstore to call him and uh, his line was busy. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been so busy with this lunch that... Look, I, I promise I am never going to get mixed up with anything like this again. No, it's all right. No, no, I mean it. I have been through so much and so little time and it's just starting that I... Would you mind if we sent out for dinner? No, I think it'd be a good idea. Oh, there it was again. Maybe she's probably calling back. Oh. Oh, Mr. Warwick. I, Mr. Warwick, I, I'm just going to have to have more space for dressing rooms backstage. Okay, Polly. How do I do it? It's really neat. Uh, well, three hundred and fifty dollars it ought to be. Uh, do you feel okay, Barbara? Well, I'll feel better when this whole mess is over and done with. Hi, Katie. Hi, Hi. Katie. How is everything this bright Sunday morning? Oh, well, it's hectic. Sue Marovich called in sick. I have to get a size 7 for tomorrow. Wait until you see the jackets, Robbie. Oh, well, I... Hey, have you seen your new outfit? This is just liable to be the hit of the show. I think I better tell you something first. What's the matter? Don't tell me you can't make it. Oh. Rob. Oh, no. Oh, yes. At first, I thought he was faking to get out of the show, but... He's got a temperature of 102. My aunt... Oh, well, he'll be all right in a few days. The show is tomorrow. Oh. Well, I just can't disappoint the department store people. I mean, we just... We're just gonna have to find somebody. Well, who else do we know is a man? Oh, hi, Dolly. Hi, Daddy. Oh, uh, what are you gonna do with my wastebasket? Empty it for you. Oh. Well, thanks. Hi, Dad. I saw these in the service port, so I cleaned them up for you. I'll put them in the closet for you. Well, thanks, Polly. That's uh, very nice of you. Hi. Uh, bye, Polly. Hi, Katie. I brought you something to eat. Well, Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. If you need anything else, just whistle. One for Dodie, two for Polly, and three for, well, you know. Uh, Katie, uh, how's Rob? Oh, he's got a touch of the flu. My aunt's home nursing him along with chicken soup. See you later. Yeah, and, and thanks. Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Barbara, just what's going on? I mean, uh, Dodie emptying my wastebasket and Polly shining my golf shoes and Katie bringing me up something to eat and... Uh, just what is it? They were buttering you up. Buttering me up for what? Well... Never mind, darling. I'll tell them not to bother you anymore. It was nothing. <laughs> Daddy, Mama said not to bother you until you're done with this stuff. Well, she did. Well, I'll tell you, let's just say I'm finished for now. Hmm? Okay, now I'll bother you. <laughs> Why won't you be a model for Mommy? Why won't I be a model for Mama? Mm-hmm. 
I don't know what you're talking about, don't you? Well, Robbie was going to do it, but he got sick. Oh, Robbie was going to do it. Uh-huh. Exactly what uh, was he supposed to do? Just stand around and let people take pictures. Well, why doesn't Mommy ask me? Because she says you're not supposed to be bothered with dumb junk. Oh. And uh, all you'd have to do is take some pictures, huh? Mommy's out in the hallway looking sad, staring at the phone if you want to talk to her. <laughs> Barbara, Dodie tells me you're looking for a male model. Do you think I'd be the type? Oh, do you mean that? Well, sure. If Robbie was willing to help, why shouldn't I? Just so it doesn't take too much time. Oh, Steve! I'm just a little hurt you didn't ask me before. Oh, but I know how much you hate that sort of thing. Oh, honey. <gasps> oh. Just a second. Mommy's kissing Daddy. <laughs> Mommy. Mr. Douglas? Uh, yes. My name is Henny Trunchell. I'm president of the Charity League. Oh, yes. And this is Mr. Felix, our fashion expert. We're here about the fashion show. Oh, Barbara, well, come right in. Uh, Thank you. Sure. Barbara's upstairs. Uh... Barbara, you got company? Barbara tells me you've considered a model for us. Well, just the uh, photographic. Uh... Well, then, if I may, please. Oh. I pictured a younger man. <laughs> Uh, but now that I see you, I think a few years and the added maturity will work out all right. Well, that, that's fine. He's much too large. Uh, raise your arms, please. Oh, I know my waist size. It's, uh... Please, Mr. Douglas. <laughs> all right, Tramp, that's enough. Uh, um, I love Mrs. my dear. Mrs. Mr. Felix. Tramp. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry we disturbed you, dear. Are you well? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm just fine, thanks. You know, I was chairwoman of the show last year. I lost nearly ten pounds worrying over every little thing. You know, you mustn't let that happen to you. No, I'll try not to. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Mm. I still think he's much too large. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Well, uh, if you ladies will excuse me, I have some work. Oh, I'm Mr. Phoenix, I, I just want to... Oh, yes, well, we must be going. I'm looking forward to seeing you in your outfit tomorrow, Mr. Douglas. Uh, so am I. <laughs> I'll send the truck around in the morning for the dresses. Now, I'm sure you're going to manage everything just fine. Do try to get some sleep tonight, dear. You look distraught. Oh, well, I'll try. Bye-bye, <laughs> dear. Bye. Bye, Bye, Bye. Mr. Douglas. <laughs> Tramp? I've said it before, I'll say it again. Never will I ever get involved in anything like this again. <laughs> okay, everything that's loose goes. Now, uh, let's be sure we don't leave anything. Well, I'm off. Oh, you look so handsome. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't suppose you found anybody to take my place today. Honey, I'm counting on you. Now try to be there as early as you can for the fitting, okay? Okay. All right. See you later. All right. Get the car keys. Oh. Put them on the dresser, I guess. Janice? Uh, well, uh, everything's ready to go, and uh, be sure they put it backstage. Okay. Well, we'll see you soon. <laughs> He almost took Myrtle. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Look, why don't you go in the kitchen and uh, get a cookie? Can Myrtle have one to soothe her nerves? <laughs> well, that's one crisis we averted. Maybe it'll be a good day after all. I think I'll get a cookie, too. Insurance for later. <laughs> oh, now, honey. Right on the dresser. There's... Remember to be there as early uh, as you can. Uh, darling, uh... I thought I left my briefcase there. Oh, well, they must have picked it up with the rest of the stuff. Oh, well, it's probably in the truck. A truck? Ah, uh, truck's gone. Well. Well, look, I'm going to go right down to the show, so I'll put your briefcase in a taxi, and I'll send it right on to the plant, okay? That's fine. Yeah, well, what can I say? Well, nothing. Now, quit worrying. Everything's going to be fine. Oh. 
See you backstage, huh? Okay. Watch it, Jack. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Hi, Dodie. Hi, Daddy. I uh, guess I'm a little late. Uh, sorry, but I got hung up in the car. Oh, honey, thank goodness you're here. Yeah, well, uh, what, what do I have to put on? I mean, uh, where do I go? All right, wait just a minute, honey. Okay. Hi, Hi Polly. Dad. Great, honey. Sweetheart, you're on. Bye, Daddy. If I croak out there, come and get me. <laughs> Uh, Barbara, uh, where do I go? Uh, just a minute, lovey. Uh, honey, uh, wait for the new music cue, all right? Uh, am I all hooked? I beg your pardon? The hooks. Oh. Yeah, but, uh, here, I'll take over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. Hey, I didn't croak or anything. <laughs> you were wonderful. All right, now you go and change because you're on in ten minutes, okay? Okay, this year is fun. Uh, Barbara? Hmm? Uh, wait. Oh, oh, yes, the waiter. Follow the waiter, honey. Mr. Felix will be in in just a minute to fit you. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, hi, hi, Katie. It's Katie. Oh, you're here. Hey, Hosta, Hosta, watch, buddy, watch. You are late. And I still think you're too large. If you knew the trouble, I have to get this ready. Well... Let's try the shirt on first, huh? All right. Please. <laughs> You're sure this is a man's shirt? The very latest, Mr. Bess. All this stuff supposed to hang out this far? Yes, it is. Now, let me see the effect. Oh, la de da <laughs> You may put your arms down now. Well, that will just have to do. I must get you on that runway in a couple of minutes. Runway? What runway? The runway. How many runways are there? <laughs> okay, now, now, what, what? Barbara. Yes, oh, honey, you look Barbara, lovely. Barbara, what is this about a runway? Right out there, honey. I know where it is, but do you mean to tell me that I'm supposed to go out there and walk down that runway in front of all those people? Yes. Barbara, I, I thought all I was supposed to do was to have my... I'm not going to do it. What? I said I'm not going to do it. Honey! Well, look at it. You can't expect me to go out there in front of all those people dressed like this. I look like a double ruffled patoon. Steve, honey, you've got to do it. No, I don't. But it's almost time. Barbara, there are times when a man just has to take a stand, and this is definitely one of them. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do it. Steve! I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm not sorry, and I'm not going to do it. No, wait. Steve! Do it. Steve! I'm sorry. Go! Complications. Isn't it nice the fashion show turned out to be such a success? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. We're fixing dinner for you and Barbara. Then I have to go back to Robbie. Did she uh, say anything about today? No. If you're worried about what happened, the waiter finally modeled your suit on the runway. And he did just fine. Yeah. Well, uh, I'd better go over and see her. And, uh, thanks for making dinner. Poor Dad. Looks like he feels just terrible. Hi. Hi. Honey, I, uh, I'm sorry I let you down this afternoon. It's all right. The waiter wore the suit. Yeah, Kitty told me about it. But, uh... Well, I knew you were exhausted and worried and unhappy, and, uh, well, I just should have gone out there no matter how I felt about it. But if I'd only known about the runway, but it, it came as such a surprise, and... Surprise? Yeah, you know, having your picture taken is one thing, but mincing along that runway in front of all those people... Well, did you tell like, me that you didn't know? No, well, Dodie just said something about, uh, having my picture taken, but, uh, You thought I knew? I mean, about the runway and all that? Yes, of course I thought you knew. <laughs> I guess our communication sort of broke down somewhere along the line. You thought that I practically double-crossed you, and yet you came in here and said you were sorry? Well, I... oh, You know what? 
You really are some sort of guy. Hello? Just a second. I'll go see. I think you better call back. Mommy and Daddy are kissing again. I hardly know what I'm saying. He didn't sleep last night. He was sick. And he's really pale right now. He has to take a chemistry test today. I'm shaking all over. Well, it sounds like he has a touch of tomaine. Is there such a thing as a touch of tomaine? I mean, he was green. Now he's that terrible chalky white. And he won't let me call a doctor. What'd you have for dinner last night? Just ordinary stuff. I make this sort of hamburger and beans dish all mixed together. <gasps> Oh, no. Uh, hold the phone a minute while I check something. Oh, uh, it's okay. I thought I might have given him cat food by mistake. But, <laughs> but it's still there. <laughs> Honey, don't try to get out of bed yet. Barbara, he looks terrible. What'll I do? I suggest you make him some wheat tea and toast, and if he doesn't get better soon, you call the doctor, no matter what he says. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Oh. oh, honey, you can't go to school today. When did we get a cat? <laughs> it's a little stray that I feed every once in a while. Sit down. I gotta take that test. The whole Phillips doesn't give makeup exams. Are you positively sure that cat food's still in the refrigerator? Thanks, darling. Can you stand up? Sure. Oh, just shower, all right? Don't shave. After all, you don't have to be clean shaven to take an exam. I'll make breakfast. Well, just tea and toast. Oh, I'd better call the doctor. Okay, okay. Tea and toast will be fine. Honey, you know, this is the first time since we've been married that either of us has been sick. One more thing to share. If I ever get to Maine, I'm sure I'll be a real baby about it, so be prepared for a lot of tears. Chip, did you eat anything that I didn't cook? I don't think so. Hello? Oh, hi, Dad. Well... I won't say that he's fine, but he's up and he's taking a shower. I told him not to shave. Uh, Polly, I was thinking, uh, when Chip was little, he had this allergy. He was uh, allergic to beans, uh, lentils, string beans, any kind of beans, and I... Uh... Oh, and I've been killing him by inches. <laughs> I serve him that beans and hamburger dish almost every night. Chip's been sick before and he'll be sick again, and... <laughs> now, wait a minute, I didn't mean from your cooking. <laughs> okay, Polly. Goodbye. Bye. Nothing a few years won't cure. Polly's just changing from a bride into a wife. Poor Chip. Poor Polly. <laughs> oh, Chip, is that the only shirt you've got? Yeah, what's wrong with it? You ironed it yourself. Why don't you wear a sweater? Honey, it's gonna be a hot day. Chip, please wear a sweater. There's a big iron mark on the back of the shirt. <laughs> Good thinking. It might rain or something. Well, I don't think we're 
think there's any real trick to it. I do the shoulders first, and then the back, and the arms, and the cuffs, and then the front, and I save the collar for last. Oh. Why do you do the collar last? Because it's the only thing that shows in those silly suits men have to wear. <laughs> Not when they take off their coats or sweaters. Yeah, Chip is in school. Hot, sick, taking an exam. And he can't take off a sweater because I left my brand on his shirt. <laughs> an iron mark. And your place is always so neat. Well, it may look neat. Stephen Douglas. Stay in your bed, Stephen, now. Get back in here. Are you all up? Hi. You all set? Now, come on. Let's go. What are you doing? How come you look like that? Oh, it's not today. It's today. Oh, I could have sworn you said it was tomorrow. I don't have a sitter or anything. Oh, yes, you do. I had my secretary send one over. Hi, Polly. Hi. She'll be here any minute. Oh, but look how I look. Okay, go do something to yourself, will you? <laughs> we can make it, maybe. Do something to myself? Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I certainly do know what you mean. Honey, you're wasting time. Oh, why don't you just uh, introduce me to your friends as my wife, the wreck? That'll get you off the hook and make me feel just great. Did you ever hear anything more ridiculous than that last remark? Introduce me as my wife, the wreck. Are you supposed to go someplace? Yeah. Uh, my department at the plant is having a reception for our new supervisor at a restaurant near here. So I took the trouble of getting a sitter. I tell Katie 50 times about it, and I just didn't happen to tell her this morning. I can't understand how that would happen. Sometimes I think marriage is for the birds. But birds don't get married. Exactly. <laughs> oh, break the news to mother, break the nose of my big brother, get an accent, bust my sister's cousin. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, who stuck gum under the couch? Anybody home? Just me and whoever comes down them steps when I yell. Ernie, Dodie, come on, you'll get down here. Hi, I haven't any classes today, so I thought I'd drop by. Well, glad to have you. Come on, you kids. Man, what's wrong, Uncle Charlie? Yeah, Uncle Charlie, how could we do something wrong already? We just got home from school. Feel under the couch. Man, Uncle Charlie, do I have to? It's so yucky under there. Yeah, and I wouldn't holler so loud if I were you. But Mom's got a headache and she's trying to take a nap. Oh, is this a plot to keep me from getting some rest? I... Oh, Polly, hello. Hi, I just dropped by. Uncle Charlie wants us to feel under a dirty couch. Oh? Somebody in this group stuck gum under the couch. Did you put gum under there? Uh-uh, heck no, Mama. Well, me neither. Well, at least Polly. Or me, of course. Unless you'd like Steve to feel under the couch when he gets home from work. He probably wouldn't admit he did it either. Don't you think our rights are infringed, Mom? I mean, can he force us to scrape off gum we didn't put there? Ernie, I don't want to go into a debate. Do you have any homework? <laughs> yeah, but I... No buts. Just go upstairs and do it. You too, don't you? I don't have any homework. Well, then go upstairs and do something else. Like what? Look, young lady, you march right up those stairs this minute or I'll give you some chores to do that'll make homework look like a tea party. <laughs> I'm sorry, Polly. I guess you caught us on a bad day. How's Jim? Well, he went to school, but... Barbara, who's cooking dinner tonight, you or me? Well, I'd be glad to, Charlie, if there's something else you'd like to do. I ought to be cleaning the gum off the couch, but I guess I can do both. <sighs> if... Excuse me a minute, Polly. Uh, Charlie, uh, let's not discuss it in front of Polly. She's a little upset as it is. Well, what's she got to be upset about? I hear you've been poisoning Chip lately. <laughs> and Charlie... Oh, but look, that's only a joke. Well, uh, this is no time to joke about such things.
crash in. Oh, hi. You don't have to knock. If I want privacy, I just barricade the door. I, um, I don't want to bother you if you're doing homework. Bother me? Man, I'm delighted to be bothered. I just sort of had a feeling I wanted to sit in Chip's old bedroom. This is the place. This is where me and old Chip grew up together. I wonder if he really wanted to get married. Or if he was just too nice to tell me how he really felt. Oh, you must have wanted to get married. That guy doesn't wreck his life just to be polite. Wreck his life? Oh, well, not that old Chip wrecked his life exactly. What I mean is, lots of people survive getting married. But you think it would have been better to wait, right? Well, if you're asking Ernie Douglas boy bachelor, Ernie Douglas teenage philosopher, sure it would have been better to wait. We seem to have found that out. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Where have you been? School. All day? I called, and they said the exam was over at 3 o'clock. Did you go to all your classes? I was in the school infirmary. Infirmary? What happened? Well, I sort of passed out during the test. From my cooking? When they pumped out my stomach, they said I'd be fine. Pumped out your stomach? Well, just a little bit. I'm fine. I really am. How about dinner? How can you trust me with your stomach again? What did you have to eat last night? Just some spaghetti. Clean white spaghetti and no sauce. And uh, a little tea. Then it's just a reaction from the tomain and having his stomach pumped. You might say he's still a little sensitive. The spaghetti was a little tough. These things happen all the time, my dear. The best we doctors can do is look a little wise and tell you to have this prescription filled. Now you call me if you think it's necessary and stop looking so worried. Goodbye now. So long, Chip. Thank you, Doctor. Bye. Oh, darling, I'm just no good for you. Come on, Polly, cut it out. No, I mean it. Yes. My daughter-in-law. Uh, which one, Janet? Oh, fine. Send her in. Hi, Dad. Hi, Polly. Oh, it's good to see you. Uh, sit down. Hmm? Well, uh, what's on your mind? Well, uh, I wouldn't have come down here, except that it's important. Um, it's about Chip and me. I, uh, I hear he's up and around again. Yeah, he's fine. That's why it's time to make the move. I mean, I couldn't make the move when he was lying there looking so pathetic. What, uh, what move are we talking about? Well, first of all, I want you to know that I love him. But I'm only 18, and I'm so dumb. Well, now, Polly, I've known you too long to let you get away with a statement like that. Well, I can get A's and B's and political science and English lit and stuff like that, but I'm beginning to think that my father was right. Eighteen is so young to... <laughs> the point is that I'm no good for Chip. Don't you think Chip should be the judge of that? I'm concerned about you. Why would you think such a thing? Well, I've seen him struggle trying to maintain a wife, to try to pay for our room at the dorm. What do I do to help? Well, he, they had to pump his stomach out. Oh, well, then the uh, whole problem comes down to cooking? No. It comes down to what's best for him. I don't want our marriage to turn into a series of fights and arguments and bitterness, like... Like what, Polly? Like most marriages. Well, Polly, marriages and families are made up of human beings and uh, well, many times they yell a lot and uh, argue a lot but when it comes right down to it they they still love each other I know it's because I love Chip 
and I'm bad for him, and I don't want bitterness for him, but I'm leaving him. Hey, honey, open the door. My hands are full. Oh, I'll be right there, darling. This box has got fried chicken. What we don't eat tonight, we'll save for lunches. This box has got ice cream and napkins and junk. You okay? I'm fine. I'll never forget this little room, will you? You won't get a chance to. We'll be here until we graduate. And that reminds me. I got a lot of studying to do tonight. Old Phillips is letting me take a makeup exam after all. And I guarantee it. Nobody will be here to give you Tomaine this time. Well, and I got a present for you. You shouldn't buy me presents. Well, this is something we both need. <laughs> hey, come on, honey. Well, what did you say? Did you try to talk her out of it? Well, sure. I spent the whole morning trying to talk her out of it. She thinks she's leaving Chip for his own good. Oh, that's a romantic notion. I just hope when it gets right down to it, she won't be able to make herself leave him. Right? I'm just going for a walk. Oh, well, I'll go with you. Of course, I just might happen to go in the general direction of Chip and Polly's place. Hmm. Well, let's both go in the general direction of Chip and Polly's place. I just hope she tears up the note before he wakes up and sees it. What note? Honey, where have you been? Anytime a woman leaves her husband, she always writes a soul-searing, heart-rending note to tear him up for the rest of his life. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. It wasn't lately, Chip? <clears throat> he bought me a cookbook, so he's a lot safer than he used to be. Well, you make yourselves at home. I have to go help Charlie. We're having a disagreement about where you put the thermometer when you check a turkey. Hi, you guys. Hi, Dottie. You look all right to me, Chip. How am I supposed to look? Uncle Charlie said Polly wrecked your main toe. <laughs> it's called Tomaine, and Polly didn't have anything to do with it. I had a virus or something. Oh. Ernie, is Uncle Charlie making a cake? Yeah, I think so. Then I get to lick the bowl when he's done making the icing. Icing isn't good for little kids. But it's okay for teenagers, right? Hiya, kids. Hiya, Hi, Charlie. 
You poisoned anybody today, Polly? Charlie. Ah, nothing personal, Steve. Polly knows I wasn't always the great cook I am now. Back in the olden days, they used to call me Stomach Pump O'Casey. Uh, uh, Charlie, uh, how's the turkey coming? Don't you think maybe you'd better check on it? Oh, Barbara's checking it. Charlie. Oh, uh, okay, Steve. Nobody has to kick me in the head. Hey, you can open the door. Yeah. Hi, Barbara. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hi, Dad. Hi. All right, we're going to put them down. Protect yourselves. There you go. You ready? Now, be careful, you guys. Go up high. It's getting heavy. Oh, how was the reception the other day, Rob? The, oh, the reception. Oh, that's great. Katie came in a red outfit and was the belle of the ball. <laughs> Charlie, get away from that thing. Oh, Charlie! Oh. Right. What was it? Oh, 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 who did that? Oh, who else? Your name's Oh, that's oh, bad. 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 Hey, you can bust every bowl in the house. Dad? Yeah, Polly. Do you think I'll be smarter when I'm a few years older? Well, honey, that's hard to tell. I'm still waiting for my load of wisdom to arrive. It arrived the other night when I was leaving Chip. Uh, what arrived? What you called your load of wisdom. Thanks very much for letting me grow up a little bit all by myself. Well, uh... Oh! <laughs> Sprains your big toe, Charlie. You still don't want to tell me how it happened. No, I don't. Now, what am I going to do around here? I can't stop my work. Well, if you want to keep moving around, you've got to get yourself a cane. Not me. I wouldn't wear a cane. <laughs> then keep that big toe off the floor. Where will I keep it? In my pocket? And I can't do a thing for that disposition of yours. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm putting on my sock. What does it look like? I'm <laughs> in slow motion? Yeah, well, I sprained my big toe. Ah, uh, well, that's too bad. How'd you do it? Why is that the first question everybody asks? Because it's a weird injury. How'd you do it? Well, I ain't saying. Now, how does that grab you? <sighs> okay, okay. If you don't want to talk about it, I'm not going to pump you. I'm all choked up. <laughs> Oh, uh, by the way, I've got a girl coming over for dinner tonight. You also got wonderful timing. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Charlie, but we have a science project together. And uh, who knew you'd hassle your big toe? Oh, well, I can't make it. You're going to have to buy me a cane. Uncle Charlie, if you need a cane, I'll go get you a cane. As soon as you tell me how you did it. <laughs> That's blackmail. Right. Well, I, I hauled off and kicked the stove. Now you're satisfied. You want plain wood or bamboo? Plain wood. Just like your head. <laughs> Bernie, I don't think you should have mentioned how your Uncle Charlie kicked at the stove at the dinner table tonight. How come? Well, you saw how he blew up. <laughs> Maybe not. Hey, listen, Paula, we, we got to figure out the psychology project. I know. I can't possibly think of how to do a paper on the power of suggestion. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly the next Pavlov, either. Then maybe flunking this project's inevitable. I'm not giving up that easy. I knew I could count on you, Ernie. You know something, Paula? You're better at psychology than you pretend to be. <laughs> Hi, Paula. Ernie. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mr. Douglas. Hi, oh, Barbara. I'm home. Hi, Annie. Hi. Sorry I'm late. 
What are you trying to do, boycott my cooking? Oh, anything but that. Oh, what's new? Uh, well, uh, uh, Charlie sprained his toe. You sprained his toe? How? Well, there's only one sensible way to sprain your toe, and that's kick the stove. <laughs> you can't stand that cane, right, Uncle Charlie? That's putting it mildly, honey. It's like walking on stilts. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetheart. How's my girl? Fine, but Uncle Charlie's horrible. I kicked the stupid stove, and if I get a chance, I'll do it again. <laughs> See, he's a little touchy about it. <laughs> I guess I would be, too. I'm gonna go this round. Okay, Mom? Okay, sweetie. I'll, I'll eat the casserole. Uh, tell me, uh, why did Charlie kick the stove? Well, he was uh, putting something in the oven. Oh, and uh, you mean this oven? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with it? <laughs> oh. Well, I guess I'd better get my tools and see if I can save his other foot. Okay, Dodie's ready. Let's go. Ernie, I don't know if we should be treating your family like guinea pigs. <sighs> cool it, Paula. And this is all in the name of science. Well, I guess we're not doing anybody any harm. Of course we are. Now, I'll handle the whole thing, and you just take notes. Okay, Dodie. Ernie's gonna show us some magic, Myrtle, so take it easy. Okay, Dodie, you, you stand over there, and I'll take Myrtle. What are you gonna do with her, Ernie? Oh, uh, you'll see. Now, uh, close your eyes, Dodie. Okay. I'm peeking through the cracks, you know. <laughs> Turn around, Dodie. Okay. The magic won't work if you're looking. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Okay, Dodie. Turn around. Now go over to the towel and get your friend. Where's Myrtle? That is Myrtle. Ernie, I'd hate to tell you this, but I'm holding a book. <laughs> Watch, I'll show you. Hi, Myrtle. Sure, I'll tell her. Myrtle says she'd like to play. Hi, Myrtle. You want to play? Ernie, this thing isn't saying a word. <laughs> Don't call Myrtle a thing. You'll hurt her feelings. It's hard getting used to a flat Myrtle full of pages. <laughs> That was the power of suggestion in action. She actually believes that book is Myrtle. Well, I think it's a horrible trick to plan a little girl. <sighs> cool it, Paula. The science has no time for emotionalism. Now what? Uncle Charlie's next. He'll be a cinch. Boy, the look on your little sister's face when you told her that book was her doll. <sighs> Listen, Paula, we've got a science experiment to finish. And besides, I told Dodie I'd change Myrtle back. Well, all right. Now I need you to distract Uncle Charlie while I borrow his cane for a while. <laughs> now here's the part that kills me. Will doing up you should be asleep that's the whole problem <laughs> honey what are you doing up at this time of night ernie changed myrtle into this a book that's what i say <laughs> he says it's myrtle <laughs> honey i don't think we understand i don't either but it sure is making me sad <laughs> Well, I think I'll have a little talk with Ernie. Right now? Right now. Ernie, wake up. Mm -hmm. Come. Because Dodie just came into our room and said you'd changed Myrtle into a book. Oh, Dad, you know that's impossible. Now look, the middle of the night is no time for 20 questions. I'd like an explanation. 
I can't tell you. Ernie. Well, there's a good reason for me not telling you, Dad. It, it has to do with school. And if I tell you, it'll blow what I'm doing. Ernie, I want you to get Myrtle and change the book back into a book. Well, that was sort of wreck what I've been doing, Dad. <sighs> okay. I left it behind the couch in the living room. At least I thought I left her behind the couch. <laughs> Dad, I looked all over, but I can't find her. Uh, but wh what I was looking for. Ernie, please change this book back into Myrtle. Dota, the spell's gonna last a little bit longer. Then you'll get Myrtle back, okay? Uh-uh. Hey. You guys won't believe this, but I swear I'm a full inch taller than I was when I went to bed. Could this be some kind of a crazy dream? So your Uncle Charlie really thought he'd grown taller, huh? Sure. I told you cutting off his cane was a stroke of genius. And you cut off another half inch? Well, I would have cut off more, but you got to be subtle about these things. Lowering the shelves is supposed to further the illusion? Right. It's going to work like a charm. Ernie, sometimes I think you're becoming possessed by the power of suggestion. Cool it, Paul. We're going to get an A on this project. Charlie, why don't we have dinner in the dining room tonight? Well, it's okay with me. You have to sit another place. Ernie's friend Paul is coming to dinner again. Again? Uh -huh. Maybe we ought to start charging her by the meals. <laughs> What's another mouth to be? You know, Barbara, this cane seems to be getting further from the ground by the minute. Hmm. Well, it must be the spraying, Charlie. You must be walking differently or something. Well, maybe you're right, but I had visions of becoming a giant and, and landing in, believe it or not. Uh, believe it or not, we've worn out another sponge. Yeah, well, don't worry. I got an extra supply in the back closet. something. Do I look any different? Well, I don't think so. Well, you remember how I told you about the cane leaving the floor? Mm -hmm. Well, now I reach up on the shelf that used to take standing on my tiptoes, and now I reach it flat-footed. And another thing, I've been ducking through doorways lately. <laughs> and I swear that my clothes are getting tight. <laughs> wow, Ernie. Next thing I know, you'll have us wiretapping or something. Cool it, Paula. Science can't slow down and check ethics every five seconds. Who said that, Dr. Frankenstein? <laughs> Just remember that A we're gonna get. Okay. Let's hear what they said. You have to sit another place. Ernie's friend Paul is coming to dinner again. Again? Huh? Maybe we ought to start charging her by the meals. <laughs> hey, I resent that. Uh, I'll run the team up for you. I mean, I can understand if I were a glutton. <laughs> And another thing, I've been ducking through doorways lately, and I swear that my clothes are getting tight. Well, we seem to have Uncle Charlie's case handled. Now, do you know what we do? You tell me. You're the mad scientist. <laughs> we go to work on an individual of higher intelligence. Who? My dad. Somebody ought to do an article on me in National Scientific. Ernie, I still say your dad will never fall for it. to do is suggest that the farmers are using a new chemical that makes the tomato crop sweeter. With that fact planted in his head, he won't question the sweetened ketchup. But how do you know he'll even use it? Well, we're having hash brown potatoes, and my dad wouldn't touch a hash brown without ketchup. You've got it all figured out, haven't you? Yeah. Ernie, aren't you worried about your mind going completely diabolical? <laughs> cool it, Paula. Science has no time for soul searching. Let's go. You know, I never used to hit you there, Steve. It was always down here, around the nose. Well, maybe so, Charlie. I know so. Okay, everybody sit down. Paula, you can sit over there, and Ernie, honey, you sit over there by you. Okay? Thanks, honey. Hi, Myrtle. Hi, Dodie. Just because I'm little doesn't mean I'm dumb, Ernie Douglas. <laughs> I had the library and check it for me, Steve. It's rare, but there are cases of people my age 
growing again. <laughs> well, I suppose there is a remote possibility, Charlie. Very interesting, Uncle Charlie. In fact, I think I've been looking up at you more than I used to. <laughs> I told you, Steve. You know, I want to stop growing around 6'3". Is 6'3 tall enough? Yeah. I don't want to shell out for a new bed. <laughs> Which reminds me of another interesting thing I heard today. Dad, farmers are using a new chemical that has made the tomato crops a lot sweeter than before. Is that so? Hmm. All tomatoes? Yeah. Every American tomato is about five times sweeter than before. Oh, yeah. Interesting how a chemical could sweeten up tomatoes. Don't you think, Dan? Yes. Who put the sugar in the ketchup? You know, I wish we hadn't gotten into this bridge game with the Baxters tonight. Mm, I know, honey. We'll wipe them out and we'll be home early. Yeah, you know the Baxters. If they're losing, we're liable to be stuck there till four in the morning. Honey, what was all that sweet tomatoes and uh, sugar in the ketchup business with Ernie tonight? Oh, well, as I understand it, it had something to do with the project at school. Yeah, I heard that, but uh, it didn't make any sense to me. And what about Myrtle? Well, uh, he told me that losing Myrtle wasn't part of the project. Honey, uh, you suppose there's any way we can stop Mrs. Baxter from quoting Charles Gorin all evening? No way. Gee, that terrible time getting Dodie to sleep tonight. I hope Myrtle turns up. Well, she better turn up. And you suppose Mrs. Baxter will uh, miss Deal every hand again? Absolutely. Honey, just how did we uh, get hooked into this bridge game tonight? Oh, you set it up with Mr. Baxter on the golf course. Oh, that's how we got hooked into this bridge game. <laughs> Anytime you're ready. We gotta be cool. Just another quarter inch. We've gotta be cool. I'm cool. You're the one that's going overboard. Well, in science, you must be thorough, Paula. But where would Pester and Lister be if they quit just because somebody frowned at them? Or anywhere going over to the Baxters. Uh, isn't that Charlie's cane? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ernie, I better be going. <laughs> Nice loyalty under fire, Paula. <laughs> Ernie, I don't understand what you're doing. Uh, well, you see, uh, I, uh, I think I'm pulling the whole thing together. Besides cutting Charlie's cane off from time to time, I suppose you also lowered the shelf. Well, you see, it all falls under the category of science, Dad. Ernie, you and I will have a little talk when I get home. Okay, Dad. Put away the saw. <laughs> Science just ran into a brick wall. Myrtle! Well, welcome back. Well, I hope you're ready for a lecture, Myrtle. Because here it comes. Bernie? Yeah? Hi. Hi, Dad. Ernie, uh, you're 16 years old now, so I shouldn't have to lecture you anymore. <laughs> when you start out that sensible, it sure hits home. Now, exactly what is this project you've been doing? It was on the power of suggestion. You know, uh, suggest something and see if people fall for it and record the situation. Well, to you, it was just a scientific project, right? Right. But you involved people. We were supposed to. Oh, look, I, I found Myrtle. And I didn't give her to Dodie because she was already asleep. Well, that's fine. But how could you know that losing Myrtle wouldn't have a, well, a traumatic effect on your little sister? I guess I'm lucky she's pretty sensible. And how about Uncle Charlie? <laughs> oh, Dad. <laughs> Didn't you think it was kind of interesting how he thought he was taller? Yeah, I was quite interesting. But, Ernie, cold clinical interest is one thing. Fooling with people's lives is another. Right? Okay. Ernie, uh, when did you start losing your hair? 
losing my hair. And yet I'm only 16. Well, maybe, maybe it's just the light in here, but it definitely looks to me like it's thinning right at the temples. <laughs> Getting me thinner? Hey. You teach me an object lesson, right? Right. Good night, Ernie. Oh, uh, massage will help that a lot. <laughs> Service board journey? Oh, yeah. Tramp was using her for a pillow. Huh. Well, I hope you brushed her off before. Oh, good morning, sweetie. Mama, look. In the night, Myrtle changed back from a bug to Myrtle. Well, uh, Ernie. Dode, I never did change her into a book. I threw her behind the couch to make you think something that wasn't true. I don't care, as long as she's back. Hey, Steve, hold this thing up against the wall, will you? I think I grew another quarter of an inch last night. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm to blame, Uncle Charlie. It was part of a science experiment. An experiment to do what? Well, it's about the power of suggestion. Yeah, well, I don't know anything about that. Come on, Steve, hold this thing up against the wall, will you? Uh, Charlie, you're really not... To... Well, what Ernie's trying to tell you is that he, he planted the idea in your mind that you're growing taller. Look, and he's just a kid. What does he know? Now, come on, Barbara. Steve won't hold it up. You hold it up, will you? <laughs> I'm telling you guys that last week I was nowhere near this tall. I'm growing and I know it. When I'm going down, I'm going to get me a bunch of vitamins. And I'm going to join up with one of them gym classes. And you know that I might have to buy all new clothes? And I swear that my shoes are getting tighter. And today, one of my arms is starting to grow. Now look at that. It's getting bigger and bigger and longer all the time. Now tomorrow, the other one.